It can often be very difficult to diagnose posterior canal BPPV when relying on two-dimensional graphs that really only show horizontal and vertical eye traces. In addition to that, it can also be difficult for the examiner to know if they have placed the patient's head into the correct position for an effective dix hall pike evaluation. The third generation of Visualize addresses these problems. The advanced dix hall pike test uses an inertial measurement unit or head sensor that attaches to the goggles and can detect patient head position in any plane. The 3D head model will then represent the patient's head position as soon as the sensor has been calibrated. There's a target graph above the head model with an indicator to allow the examiner to see when they have placed the patient's head to precisely 45 degrees left or right, and then a second indicator to the right of the head model that allows the examiner to see when the patient's head is lowered to the correct 30 degree hanging position. Notice how the indicators will turn green when the head is within the acceptable angle. This precision provided by the 3D model takes the guesswork out of the evaluation, gives the examiner confidence, and ultimately leads to better posterior canal BPPV diagnoses. Now let's address the issue of relying on horizontal and vertical eye traces when the nystagmus elicited by posterior canal BPPV is actually torsional in nature. The third generation of Visualize has the added advantage of torsional eye tracking. With this torsional tracking algorithm developed by Johns Hopkins, we are able to visualize the torsional components of the eye movement, as well as measure and extract the torsional velocity for each identified bead of nystagmus. Setting the reference on the iris of the eye is paramount to a successful torsional tracking. It's important to set the reference when the goggle cover is already in place and the pupils are dilated, as you will see in the video. Setting reference is quick and will save time through the evaluation if done correctly at the onset. If the reference for torsion is set when the goggle cover is off, like you see in the image on the left, the pupils will be small, as well as the reference area. But for best tracking conditions, set the reference in the same condition as testing will be performed, with the patient wearing the light tight fixation-free goggle cover. Now let's take a look at how the torsion tracking actually appears on the screen. Since torsional eye movements are really the most important part of a dix hallback test, Visualize brings this to the forefront. You will see the data points for each identified beat of torsional nystagmus plotting in the torsion velocity graph in real time through the exam. Each beat of nystagmus is plotting in this torsion velocity graph as the test is being performed. Again, it adds confidence for the examiner, especially in those cases where it is difficult to visually observe the torsional nystagmus in the eye video. Sometimes the torsional nystagmus is so small that it's difficult to rely on the video. The torsional algorithm can measure nystagmus as small as one degree, providing clinicians with the precision they need. The video playback screen allows you to see all of the data for horizontal and vertical eye movements, which is still important, but by adding the third component of torsion, we are able to fill in the gaps that have been missing with traditional dix hall pike testing. The added torsional tracking not only helps you in your diagnosis of posterior canal BPPV, but the lack of torsion is equally as important for differential diagnosis. Let's take a look at this case example. If you look at the horizontal and vertical eye traces and SPV graphs, you can see that this patient had 7 degrees per second left beating nystagmus and 3 degrees per second up beating nystagmus during the left dix hall pike evaluation. Upon inspection of those graphs only, you may be inclined to believe this patient had a mild left posterior canal BPPV. Yet if we play the video and look at the torsion trace and torsion velocity graph, 
you can see that there are no identified beats of torsional nystagmus. The lack of torsion in this case helps the examiner to avoid a misdiagnosis. This patient was actually diagnosed with central positional vertigo, as evidenced by horizontal and vertical eye traces, along with no visible torsional nystagmus in the additional graphs, again highlighting the benefit of recording all three components of eye movement.